Hi, hello everyone. I am Sanjeevni Kusum. Last time when I was doing my introduction video, I told you that I would come back uh, with some topic every time and it would be some interesting topic to share things with you, to discuss things with you and this time I am back with my somewhat bearable face. <laughs> I guess so and uh, a very interesting topic that is called childhood imaginations. <laughs> The topic, the name of the topic itself brings a huge smile upon our face, the childhood imaginations. We all had our share of childhood imaginations where we thought that those imaginations were so true that some of them we still hang to them, we, uh, even though we don't think that they are true anymore, but still we hang to them and whenever we think of them, it brings smile to our faces and it takes back into our childhood isn't it so before a couple of days i posted a facebook to share with me some of your childhood imaginations a few people have responded and a lot of people had said that they couldn't remember any such childhood imaginations i guess after seeing this video you would come up with a lot of childhood imaginations and while um, watching this video also you would remember a lot of your own childhood imaginations that you once thought were so very real and please make sure that you share with them that you share them with me in my inbox okay so let us go on with this childhood imaginations of some of the people who has shared and some of my own imaginations so here comes the first one it is from vadlamuli padmavati ma'am she is from vijayawada and she thought that money grew on trees <laughs> oh god really uh, we all had this imagination isn't it that money grew on trees well if that was true ma'am i wish it was so true that we couldn't have to uh, work anymore and we could do whatever we like like going places seeing people meeting people wow life would life would have been much better isn't it without the competition of earning this money but oops it's still an imagination that money grow on trees you know what concerning this i also have had certain imagination that uh this creeper money plant which we grow in our Tree, uh, houses and their leaves turn into money that was our wild imagination <laughs> and every morning along with our friends we used to check our money plan to see if there are any leaves have turned into money but alas no leaves turned into money <laughs> and uh, here comes another one from leana britain from canada She's a very good friend of mine and uh, you know, she's a social activist and she's a painter, she's a writer and she's doing a lot of things that very good things. I wish I could do some of them at least. So Liana, we all have our childhood fantasies concerning Christmas, isn't it? Santa Claus is a big part of our childhood. We think every one of us at some stage of life in the childhood have thought that Santa Claus was so much real for us that every year we waited eagerly for him with the hope that he would come on his sleigh which is run by the reindeers and he would bring gifts for us. He would come all the way from the North Pole <laughs> to every country, every kid. I mean, how cute it was. And Liana Britton, she says that she used to hear the footsteps of reindeer on her roof and thought that Santa was here with his sleigh and she should be very quiet so that he doesn't go away. And, <laughs> and she believed that it was so very real. That's so cute, Liana. And I really wish that life was so beautiful with Santa in his who gave us everything we wanted i wish each one of us have some santa in human form who can give everything we wish to us who can fulfill our uh, small wishes if not needs that would be very beautiful very good isn't it 
and another one I have to go KSR okay, Murthy sir from Palakul he says that stars and moons used to follow him in the childhood <laughs> so we even also thought that stars and moons moved with us wherever we go so I, I guess this was part of our childhood imaginations in most of our lives in the childhood of most of the kids we think that they are following us wherever we are going but Kesar Muti sir, he goes one step ahead and he used to wonder that maybe these moons and stars are following him because they are his fans. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's, that's so true because I am also your fan sir and they are following you because they are your fans and today when you go on your evening walk, just make sure to see that your fans are following you. <laughs> and one more comes from the Murti sir. I'm sure that you have never heard about this imagination ever ever from anyone. Here it comes. Uh, he says that he had saw, he had seen one or two rickshaw pullers wearing watches, wrist watches on their wrist, and he thought that it was only rickshaw pullers who wore watches on their wrist, not any other people. <laughs> so when he completed his schooling and entered into the college, his father gifted him a watch and he said that, no, dad, I don't want to waste this watch. And he, his father said that, why? And he said that, you know what? Only rickshaw pullers wear watches. I don't want to wear watches. So <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Murti said, I'm wearing the watch and i am not the rickshaw puller i know that you still don't wear the watch but believe me everyone wears the watch because <laughs> we love our watches <laughs> and one another comes from sukumar sir in hyderabad and he says that while he was in third or fourth class i mean when we begin our geography classes teachers tell us that the earth is round one big square one big uh, balloon like thing so he thought that if earth was round and if we were walking upon that we would have fallen we would have slipped off and if it is not happening then the teacher is telling a lie <laughs> yes i also thought so and you know what we all had some very curious geographical doubts like sun and moon follow us and you know what i have one of mine also where teacher asked me that where does the sun rise and i told them the sun rises in front of my house <laughs> because my house opened on to the east and every time i woke up in the morning i saw the sun rising in front of my house so that was the most logical thing i could think of and everyone laughed including the kids <laughs> maybe they thought they were more intelligent than me <laughs> and i was just simply wondering that why are these people laughing to but because i have seen it with my own eyes so sukma sir also thought that the teacher was lying when he said that the earth was round and another one comes from general gadda murti sir uh, this is <laughs> something funny which uh, we all at some time might have believed it that if we swallow seeds of the fruits then plants would sprout out of our head or plants would sprout of our, of our tummy <laughs> and he was very careful while eating fruits that he should not swallow seeds because he doesn't want plants to sprout of his tummy or out of his head even i was also very careful not to swallow the seeds because you know the <laughs> if that was i would had a lot of trees sprouting out of my, out of my tummy but that was just a cute <laughs> childhood imagination <laughs> and another one another few i can say comes from rama sandilya ma'am i guess she's from hyderabad because i don't know where she lives she is at F uh, she has shared so many interesting and cute imaginations from her childhood that I can't really, uh, can't really stop myself from sharing them with you. They are so cute, so innocent and 
in india most of us have, have a courtyard in which we plant trees like goa and uh, uh, oranges and mango and we have lot of parrots around here and the parrots come and bite upon the fruits and we are left with sometimes we are left with nothing because it's all the property of parrots they bite everything so uh, Rama Shandilya ma'am what she used to do it she used to take a sketch pen black sketch pen and write upon the fruit that see this is my fruit and you should not bite it <laughs> a message to the parrots you know what I mean <laughs> and she wondered that every morning not even one parrot listened to her and all the fruits were bitten by the parrots <laughs> you know what ma'am we also have custard apple trees in our mom's place and i love custard apples and this time i would make sure that i write this message upon the custard apple and sign my name upon it and let's see if the parrots they didn't listen to you and i want to see if they listen to me or not <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one more interesting thing that she has shared is that she squeezed the orange peels into eyes because someone told that improves the eyesight <laughs> i guess many of the indians might have did this isn't it orange peels we, we eat the oranges and we squeeze the orange orange peel in our eyes and it hurts a lot it is inflames a lot but still we do it because someone it's an childhood imagination that it would improve our eyesight <laughs> and she adds finally that even though she squeezed a lot of oranges into her eyes still she got eyesight right from the age of 10 and she had to wear spectacles even i had to wear spectacles from the age of 12 believe me i have eyesight but i'm not using spectacles here because i'm on video i just want to show my eyes <laughs> and <laughs> I have a few of mine also, you know, like everyone else had, I have also a few of mine. Some of mine are that uh, we didn't, uh, we used to keep, uh, we had mirrors of this size of a, um, one feet or so and we, we were told that we should never keep a mirror upturned to face the sky because the ghost would come and see into it <laughs> and i was so scared that no 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 i don't want ghosts in my bedroom i would just <laughs> put the mirror take the mirror and keep it upside down so that ghost doesn't come and see their faces in the mirror and you know what in the night times dad used to tell us a lot of things about satellites and rockets about the stars and moon so I thought that there was a door in the sky through which they said rockets go out and and there was a guard I mean there were a lot of guards at that door and people had to take permission before entering into the door <laughs> and <laughs> and there are others also like uh, <laughs> one very interesting uh, I promise that you might have not heard it if you are a foreigner but some of us Indians do believe it. Uh, we are told in the childhood that drink water before you go to bed and this was not told by mom. This was told by some other people. Uh, they said that drink water. Um, it was a common saying that drink water before you go to bed and we make it sure that we drink water and we discussed upon the, among the friends and some of them said that what happens if we don't drink water before we go to bed and then some of them replied that if we don't drink water before we go to bed and then our soul it if it becomes thirsty it comes out of the body and goes in search of the water and when it finds water in some pot it enters into the pot and then if someone places a lid upon the pot then boom <laughs> i mean you are dead in the morning because your soul would be trapped in the pot oh my god this, believe me this was so scary an imagination that every night we made sure that we took water even today i take water before going to bed because <laughs> these days we don't have pots 
drinking water we have bottles and imagine if someone screwed the lid of the bottle i would be trapped forever in the bottle and in this instance we also were told an interesting story that i would like to share here that one woman one old woman she was found dead in the morning and the sons thought that her heart was not beating there was no movement her breath was not running so they thought that she was dead and she put her outside and they informed all the relatives and by the time all the relatives came it was almost evening and then they were taking her out for her uh, final rites and then <laughs> then suddenly she <laughs> roses up from the bed and boom <laughs> and everyone thinks that she is a ghost oh my god she has returned from death she is a ghost and she says come on cool down i'm not a ghost you know i'm alive and you people were taking me to the crematoriums <laughs> and he said her sons asked that how come you have been dead since morning and she says that you fools I was thirsty in the sleep and my soul went out to have water and your wife put a lid on the water jar and that's why I got trapped in it and in the evening maybe someone felt thirsty and they removed the lid and here I am with my soul again. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want my soul to get trapped anywhere you know. And uh, one comes from my mom you know. Um, Whenever she dropped utensils in the kitchen, uh, there was sound of utensils in the kitchen. She would say that we are going to have some guests in the home. That guests would be arriving. And mysteriously, the guests turned out by the evening. Someone or other came up. And I found it very interesting. And mother said that, see, I told you that I had dropped utensils in the kitchen so guests would arrive. Sometimes I would try my luck and drop some utensils intentionally to see if <laughs> a guest would arrive. But that thing never happened to me. It always happens even now with mom. And whenever I go to visit my mom, she still says that I knew you would come because I had dropped some utensils in the kitchen. <laughs> mom, I don't know if that is true or not, but <laughs> that is kind of cute. <laughs> uh, I have loved so much that I had not loved in the last <laughs> couple of days. So these are some of the imaginations of my friends and mine you know there are uh, kinds of imaginations kinds of childhood imaginations some of them make us strong like in the childhood we are told that god would always be with you <laughs> isn't it a uh, very pretty very innocent one and we always believed this, yes, whatever we did, God would always be with us. And that kind of gave us strength, gave us faith that God would always be with us. And some of the imaginations, they instill faith in us. Faith to do good, faith to be good. And like uh, we have a saying in India that do good and you would get good. Do bad and you would get bad. I guess in every culture we have this kind of sayings. Uh, so it was instilled so much in our mind that he's a good person so good would happen to him if you are good uh, good would happen to you they used to say and whenever we were uh, uh, provoked to do something bad and you know it happens in everyone's life then we thought that no for for a split second even Every one of us think that no, this is a bad thing. Maybe something bad would happen to me also. And some of us refrain from doing so because the faith which was instilled in us in the childhood, we still carry it. Isn't that very good? And some instill fear like <laughs> those of monsters and ghosts that eat your dinner or monster would come and uh, suck you up in his tummy <laughs> and this kind of things. They instill fear in us and some of those stay with us throughout the life. So we should be ca very careful uh, to, to while telling these imaginations to the kids. We should be very careful that what uh, we are instilling in kids because a child's heart is very clear and very pure. It's like a clean slate. 
whatever you write upon it, uh, they take it. They have such a trust in you. So think twice before telling them anything. Tell them good and they would believe it. Tell them a bad thing and they would still believe it. So when you have this power to make them a better person, to um, make them walk upon the right path, then why do you want to choose something uh, just like fears or anything, illusions, which are not really true? I will tell you one thing that it's something I saw in a movie that uh, in a movie there was a scene where a kid was standing upon a table like this and his father asked him to jump jump upon him and he would catch him the child says that uh, father i don't want to uh, jump because what if you don't hold me and the father says that don't worry don't you trust me and the boy says that yes i trust you and he jumps and his father doesn't hold him he just his back and the child falls down and he hurts himself and the child asks that dad why didn't you hold me i had put my faith in you and then his father said that's the lesson for you don't trust anybody including your parents <laughs> i mean in the film that boy grows into a person who doesn't trust anyone in his life and i find find it very uh, but I mean it's a lesson for all of us that we shouldn't instill any such thing in a child We trust our parents. We have trust upon goodness and kindness and love uh, So instill such things which can create faith in humanity in the children and You don't need to do miracles for children. They make miracles true by themselves you just need to instill them uh, instill faith in them that miracles do happen and one day they would grow to a stage where would they would make their imaginations true and some of the imaginations do become true like people laughed at Wright brothers when they said that we can fly but here we are flying from this pole to that pole and every day we are flying so imaginations are very good and i request you to use them for the goodness to spread goodness kindness and love thank you so much i just hope that it was bearable enough video and next time i promise i would do better and come up with a better topic and entertain you much more thank you very much for watching have a wonderful day bye bye